tonight we've gathered together for a story. In the world of Grey Bobby, this faithful puppy and his sister Betty the Bookworm venture out once more to learn all they can about the God who made them. Let's settle in for another bedtime devotional with Pastor Zach. Well, class, I have some exciting news. We are going to have a class-wide soapbox derby. Niles Noctura, the kind old barn owl that taught science, turned to hand out instructions for the race. What is a soapbox derby? A soapbox derby is when you make a race car out of crates and other secondhand stuff. And then you get to race them. Man, oh man, I've been waiting for this. I've got a design that's sure to win. Really? Can I be on your team then? Well, it says here on the instructions that we can work as individuals or teams. And when it comes to soapbox racing, I'm afraid I'm a bit of a lone wolf. Sorry, Gray Bobby. Mr. Noctura overheard Red and turned his heart-shaped face to address the class. I know that sometimes agreeing on a design can be difficult, and working in a group is hard, but I think you'll find that it will produce better results in the end. You may of course work alone, but just be aware that you design alone, you build alone, and you race your car alone. As the bell rang to dismiss class, the students started to group up. Barbara Yak and her friends formed a group, Betty and Joy formed a group, and Brushy and Grey Bobby decided to team up on building a car. Just as he had said he would, Red decided to work alone. But as you might expect, his cousin and brothers formed their own team. I come from a long line of proud German engineers. We are going to blow everyone out of the water. It's a road race, Bart, not a boat race. I know. It's just a metaphor, you simple-minded porcupine. After school, the children talked about the kind of cars they would build. I'm so excited. If there's one thing that my family knows, it's speed. That is why we're going to win. Hold up there. Who is the undisputed snow sled champion at school? That's right, me. Well, this isn't a race on snow. <laughs> yeah, you mangy mutt. You didn't even know what a soapbox derby was. We know you know what a soapbox is, Barbara. You always seem to be on yours. Look, guys, not to brag, but you should probably just stay out of this one. The Crimson Comet has been on the drawing board for years, and now it's going to become a reality. We'll see, Red. We will see. Over the next week, they spent time in science class building their soapbox derby cars. Each one was as unique as their maker. Barbara Yak called hers the Yakmobile. It was made of an industrial fiberglass shell bought by her father. In fact, the whole thing was made by specialists her father had hired. Not exactly honest, but for whatever reason, Mr. Noctura allowed it. Construction is only half the contest, Miss Yak. You still have to drive the car. Like, no worries, Mr. Nocturna. This thing will drive itself. It was built by Swiss engineers. I don't need to bother with a single thing except taking calls on the phone that's built into the car. Interesting plan, Miss Yak. And what, pray tell, will your pit crew be doing? Their nails, of course. <laughs> Joy and Betty argued over the name of their car. Joy wanted to call it the Jack Rabbit 3000. Betty wanted to call it the Bucket Mobile. In the end, they settled on Hair Razor. Their power source? Joy's own two feet through the bottom of the car. She guaranteed she was faster than any engine. Are you sure you don't just want to use pedals? Are you kidding? I don't want anything between the street and these feet. Bart and his cousins took to wearing lab coats, using slide rules, and measuring every inch of their car for perfect engineering. It was an aluminum car that was polished until it shone a bright metallic. They called it Zibberkugel, which meant silver bullet in German. Bart thought the name was a witty play on werewolf legends. It is witty, is it not? The sort of thing that gives me mini ha-has. Oh, what sort of pedal system do you have there, Bart? Pedal system? <laughs> the Zebagugil runs on steam. Oh my, steam. What's the fuel? A mixture of coal and pine tar. Bart, you do realize that pine tar can tend to pop? Are you doubting my engineering skills, Mr. Nocturna? No, but what do your cousins have to say about it? My cousins are of no consequence. I am in charge here. Very well. Gray Bobby and Brushy's car was actually made out of an old wood soap crate and a large barrel. Like the Wonder Wolf's car, it had no pedals. Hmm, a very classic construction. 
Though maybe not as sleek as the other cars I've seen. Are you worried about that? Not at all. She might not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. Yes, I see. But you don't have pedals either. I had developed a pedal system, but when Brushy and I put our heads together, which was kind of painful with her quills, we came up with a secret system. Fascinating. I look forward to seeing it in action, Grey Bobby. Lastly was Crimson Comet. When Mr. Noctura stopped by, it was mostly still in pieces. Red was there sweating over the blueprints. Ah, oh, Red, it looks like you haven't made much progress here. I'm, I'm, I'm a little behind. Um, the bolts I picked out didn't fit, so I had to take it apart, and I made a mistake when I designed the pedal system, but, uh, y you know, it's a work in progress. Oh, the boosters, though, that's where the real power is. These sweet babies will rocket me to first and straight through the finish line, guaranteed. Yes, if, if you get it together in time, that is. Yeah, well, don't worry, it'll be ready to go. Are you sure you don't want any help? You know, sometimes another set of eyes will make all the difference. <laughs> no thanks. Like I said, when it comes to soapbox racing, I'm a lone wolf. When it was finally race day, the five cars were lined up and ready to go. The Yakmobile, the Hair Razor, Cyberkugel, Crimson Comet, and Grey Bobby and Brushy's car, which they called the Bumbleberry Blitz. Presumably because they had painted it a deep purple, the color of Bumbleberries. Barbara drove the Yakmobile, while Joy used her foot power on the Hair Razor. Betty was her pit crew. Bart readied his goggles and his special pine tar fuel for the Cyberkugel. His brothers were his crew. Brushy drove the Bumbleberry Blitz while Grey Bobby wore a headset as his pit manager. But Red, he was on his own, a lone wolf. Mr. Noctura picked up the flag and got ready to start the race. Students, start your engines. Ready, go! And they're off! The Yakmobile is off to a commanding lead, followed closely by Soberkugel. In third is Crimson Comet, with Hair Razor and Bumbleberry Blitz neck and neck. Wait, this car is going too fast. I couldn't hear you. <gasps> Did you say that Trad is sitting with Sheila? <laughs> the conniving kangaroo! It is time to show the power of my steam engine! <laughs> I see you, Bart. And I think it's just about time to pass you with some rocket power. After the first turn, it's still Yakmobile. Wait, no, no, whoa! It's the Silver Kugel speeding ahead with a puff of steam. Hair Razor's pulling way ahead of the Bumbleberry Blitz, and the Crimson Comet is catching up with the Yakmobile. Oh, wow, folks, look at the rockets on the side of the Crimson Comet. He's zooming past the Yakmobile. He's moving up neck and neck with Silver Kugel. Nine, go away! Sorry, Bart, you're fast, but just not fast enough. And the Crimson Comet is out front. Silver Kugel has slipped into second. The Yakmobile is... Wait, what is, she, what is she doing? I'm coming, Trad. Don't you pay any attention to little Sheila over there. Okay, now I just gotta pull over, fix my makeup, my eyelashes, and... Wait a second, how do you stop this thing? Barbara Yak's Yakmobile is veering out of control! Ah! And the Yakmobile has crashed into the stands, and alas is out of the race. Oh, Trad, would you be a dear and help me get out of this car? The cars are entering lap two. Come on, Brushy, just a little faster. Crimson Comet is still in the lead. Silver Kugel is still in second, but not so fast, folks, because Hair Razor is gaining on them. Nine, nine, I will show them, throwing all the fuel into the steam engine. Silver Kugel is speeding up, but something's happening to the steam engine. It's, it's expanding and, oh no, folks, the steam engine, it's gonna blow. Nine. The fighter is exploding! Whoa, and there goes the Silver Kugel steam engine! And Team Wonder Wolf is out. Crimson Comet is still in the lead, but Hair Razor's coming up fast, and Bumbleberry Blitz has fallen into last place. Ouch. But wait, Hair Razor's slowing down! Ouch! What am I stepping on? Uh oh. It looks like Joy's stepping on Brushy's quills that fell off on the first lap. And Hair Razor has pulled off the race course. Looks like the rabbit is pulling quills out of her feet. Folks, that's gotta hurt. Now's your chance, Brushy. Deploy the Bumbleberry Juice. Okay, let's see. Uh, ooh, ooh, sea warmer. Um, ooh, back massager. Oh, oh, here it is. Whee! Oh no, Poker Face is gaining on me. Better kick it into high gear. 
Time to hit the overdrive. <laughs> no! The bolts are coming off of my rocket! Ah! Ah! Whoa! Crimson Comet has lost its boosters and they are headed up, up, and away. And Crimson Comet is coming to a dead stop. Will you just look at him, folks? Would you just look at him? Oh, but here comes Bobbleberry Blitz with a trail of porcupine quills coming off of it like the tail of a comet. Go, Brushy, go! And the winner is the Bumbleberry Blitz! It was quite a soapbox derby. In fact, Mr. Noctura said he'd never seen one like it in all his days at the school. After Mr. Noctura had given Grey Bobby and Brushy their award, he went to each contestant pointing out the various problems with their design. When he reached Red, Red was downcast. Red, I really did like your car. The Crimson Comet was a great design. Yeah, yeah, if it was such a great design, then why did I lose? Because it was missing something. What? A team. You tried to do it all by yourself. If you had many advisors working on it with you, they would have noticed early on that you had the wrong bolt. Then you would have also had help and wouldn't have had to rush. Those bolts would have been on tighter, and you would have won. Yeah, I guess you're right. Suppose it doesn't pay to always be a lone wolf. You know, I know Grey Billy has favorite proverbs, and so do I. Here's one of mine. Proverbs 15:22. Without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. Being a lone wolf can be fine sometimes, but most of the time our plans will fail without help. It's true of people, and most especially true when we don't seek the Lord. We need the guidance of wise counselors. Most importantly, we need the wise counsel of His Spirit within us. That's something to remember when you feel like you want to go your own way. Thanks, Mr. Noctura. I promise I'll remember. With that, Mr. Noctura and Red joined Grey Bobby, Betty, Joy, Brushy, and the others to celebrate. And Barbara made sure to sit between Trad and Sheila. What did we learn today? We learned that when we don't ask for help, it can cause problems for us. We need other people sharing their wise words with us. We need teamwork and not to be loners or lone wolves. Most importantly, we need the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who can guide our lives towards the true success of glorifying Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, teach our hearts to accept help and guidance from those who are wiser, and most especially cause your Holy Spirit to teach wisdom to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. To dive deeper into the truths of this episode with discussion questions, follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Grey Bobby Bedtime Devotionals. That's Grey Bobby with an E. Now let's quiet our minds and our hearts with a good night song. Now hear the Lord's blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you His peace. Amen. Hey, Mom and Dad. If you want each week's new devotional automatically sent to your podcast downloads, be sure to subscribe. See you next week.